Palm Beach is amazing. Dear travelers from around the world, we are happy to present you a new video on our channel. Following our itinerary around Florida, we have already visited wonderful cities such as Miami and Deerfield Beach. And now, as we head further north, we are going to make a stop along the way that will definitely surprise you. Today we've come to a resort town called Palm Beach, which is one of the most luxurious and picturesque places not only in Florida, but perhaps in the entire United States of America. And here, we're going to visit a very popular site today. This impressive mansion is the Henry Morrison Flagler Museum, which was the home of one of the most important businessmen in the United States in the late 19th century and early 20th. He almost single-handedly industrialized and filled this entire area with the infrastructure we see today. He built the railroad to Key West through the Florida Keys. He also built the first hotel in St. Augustine. And what's more, he and Rockefeller together created the Standard Oil Company. So as you can see, he was quite a business tycoon. And as such, he certainly couldn't settle with a small house. Well, let's go take a look. As soon as we entered Whitehall Mansion, now known as the Flagler Museum, we were struck by the gigantic lobby resembling a Roman atrium filled with objects, marble everywhere, and a Delphic oracle overhead. Seeing just this lobby, we immediately realized how impressive the house itself would be, and we were surprised that the $26 entrance fee was enough to keep the museum in such condition. At the beginning of the tour, tourists are greeted by Octavian Augustus and a large portrait of Mr. Flagler, who looks like he is granting visitor permissions to visit his house. But before we continue our tour around the house, I think you might be interested in learning the biography of this character, who is seminal in Florida's history. Henry Morrison Flagler was born in 1830 into a family of humble origins. At the age of 14, he moved to Ohio from New York to work as a clerk in a distant relative store. He clearly had an entrepreneurial streak and even opened several different businesses. The Civil War thwarted some of his plans, but he did not give up. In 1886, after making money in the grain business, he met John Davidson Rockefeller. At age 37, together with Rockefeller, he founded the Standard Oil Company, which would go on to become a near monopoly in the United States oil industry. This made Flagler consider the brains of the company one of the richest men on the planet. The millionaire's success came during the American Gilded Age, which followed the war. It was a time of great social conflict, with the South devastated by the war, but also of enormous population growth and commercial expansion. It was during this period that Flagler decided to change the face of Florida by investing heavily in it. It all began after he paid a visit to Jacksonville, where he came with his first wife, Mary Harkness, who was suffering from a respiratory disease. Unfortunately, the change of climate did not prevent her death, but Henry decided to stay in Florida, convinced that its natural beauty would be capable of attracting scores of people. To address the lack of tourism infrastructure on the Atlantic coast, he began opening huge hotels in St. Augustine and building railroads with his new company, the Florida East Coast Railway. Flagler first connected Jacksonville with New York City, then continued his expansion toward the south where he financed ports and founded Palm Beach. There, he built two hotels including the Royal Poinciani, a huge thousand room hotel which was the largest hotel and wooden structure of its time. In 1896, the magnate arrived at Biscayne Bay and connected Fort Dallas to the rest of the peninsula. Locals suggested renaming the town Flagler in gratitude, but he declined and suggested using the native term Miami. Today, many consider him the founding father of this city. In 1901, Flagler settled in Palm Beach with his third wife, Mary Lilly, and a year later, he presented her with this huge house as a winter residence. The mansion was thus dubbed by locals as the American Taj Mahal. With 75 rooms and around 100,000 square feet, this mansion, built in a neoclassical French style, was designed to be the most spectacular in all of Florida. The design revolves around a courtyard with an impressive fountain that mimics Spanish or Italian palaces. 
The rooms on the first floor left as awestruck, especially the music room, where various events and exhibitions were held. It was the epicenter of the most exclusive gatherings in Palm Beach, a town which the Flaglers made fashionable among millionaires as a winter vacation destination. Next to the living room, there is an incredible Renaissance-style library where Henry hosted his personal guest. Another room that impressed us a lot was the Louis XV-style ballroom with 15 doors and windows, all kinds of paintings, and countless chandeliers. On the second floor of the house, there are luxurious bedrooms decorated in every conceivable style of the time. Most of the rooms are named after the colors used in their decoration, the green room and the pink room. The most striking one is Henry and Mary's master bedroom, which has ensuite bathrooms, walk-in closets, and even other adjoining bedrooms. Outside the house, in the Flagler Cannon Pavilion, we can learn more about the couple's passion for trains. This annex is a modern structure that mimics the train stations of the late 19th century and was used to house one of the family's private rail cars, number 91, on which the Flaglers traveled along Florida's east coast. We're going to take a look inside Mr. Flagler's private rail car. those days, instead of private jets, they had private rail cars. <laughs> this is way nicer than some of the modern ones I've traveled in. In this palace on wheels, Flagler completed the last of his great adventures. When Theodore Roosevelt began planning the Panama Canal, Henry saw the economic potential in Key West, the last island of the Florida Keys, 200 kilometers from the canal. To take advantage of this, Flagler's railroad company took on an incredible engineering challenge and in 1905 began connecting the Florida Keys by building dozens of bridges. This project took a lot of innovation experimentation, and working day and night for seven years. On January 22, 1912, Henry Morrison arrived in Key West on his own train and was greeted by some 10,000 people. In his inaugural speech, he said that he could now die happily in peace, having completed the major project of his life. And by the way, the tycoon died a year later from injuries sustained in a fall down some stairs at his beloved Whitehall mansion. After his death, Flagler had left an investment in Florida of about 50 million dollars, the equivalent of about 1.5 billion in today's money. So it's not surprising that his last name appears in the names of streets and businesses throughout Florida, including the city of Flagler Beach and Flagler County. Henry Flagler changed this state beyond recognition. For this reason, even if you're not a fan of museums but are interested in Florida and the era of ambition and mega projects, we recommend a visit to Whitehall Mansion. It's definitely the place where where you can get a feel for the atmosphere and spirit of this incredible state. But that didn't seem enough for us, so we decided to see another building. One of the most interesting facts about Henry Flagler is that he was the first to see an opportunity to turn Florida into a tourist destination, and he did a lot to make it happen. And since we are in Palm Beach, we decided not to miss the opportunity to take a look at one of the best hotels in Florida, and probably in the entire United States, The Breakers, which is another example of the infrastructure Flagler built to develop tourism in Florida. He saw the great potential to turn this swampy area into a major tourist destination for the whole country. 
So not only did he build hotels like the one in St. Augustine or this marvel we see here, but also railroads and a lot of other infrastructures. So it is largely to Henry Morrison Flagler's credit that we can see the huge number of tourists visiting Florida today. Look at this beautiful facade. It really is an incredible hotel. And in general, all of Palm Beach is amazing. After visiting this paradise on earth, we continue north to our next stop in St. Augustine, one of the oldest cities in the United States and one of the most beautiful as well. So don't miss it. In the meantime, if you've enjoyed this video, please support us by giving it a like and subscribing to our channel, as well as clicking on the bell so you don't miss the rest of our journey. See you soon, world travelers.